So basically in, in around half and more than half of the questions in UPSC prelims examinations are asked from. Hello dear aspirants. Today we will be talking about why history is most important for UPSC. You know, his, his UPSC takes a very challenging examination and we have a very vast syllabus in all the papers and history is one of them. But history is also very scoring for UPSC. So today we will try to see the which books should be referred for history, what are the syllabus of history. In UPSC examinations, there are there are three stages. One is prelims, mains, and interview. History plays a very important role in all these three. In the prelims exam, the syllabus is different. Mains, especially in paper one, syllabus is different. And especially if you talk about the history optional, the syllabus, syllabus is different. So today we will be discussing about these things in brief. All right. So whenever we go here, firstly, we came to understand that history is very important and history is not only important during the examination preparations and solving the questions in the examination but it is important throughout the life when you become an IPS officer, IS officer, IFS officer you will have to take many decisions as there is a very famous scholar E.H. Carr he had written history and the book name is What is History and in this book What is History he said that history is a continuous dialogue between past and present. So, we learn through history, we repeat, and the history event is always repeated. Whatever mistake is done in the past, it will be repeated or we can rectify it. That is why history is very much important. So, let us see the syllabus, patterns, questions, and the demand of UPSC from the history. If we see first, here, is the sum of the benefits and negative aspects of history, especially the history syllabus, pros and cons. If you see the history, history has a very ample study material. The questions in the examinations come directly from history. Other important part, that history overlaps with political science, international studies, geography, economics and all. So history is with other GS subjects also. Apart from this, the most important, it is most important for prelims. We will see why history is most important for prelims. And other important, that history is a very scoring subject. If you take GS paper one, the history is very scoring. And of, of, of course, in if you take history as optional, it is very scoring subjects. Okay, so this is the important. Other point, if you take the negative aspect, that is cons, the history has a wide syllabus. It is that the it is demanded from the student that the student should be interpretive in their writings and apart from the writing skills is very much important in history. All right. When we go further, we find that examiners expectations are this. If you give paper one, GS paper one, or if you see it for history as an optional subject, then the examiners has some type of expectation from you whenever you solve your questions. The first such expectation is that you should have the in-depth knowledge of the subject. So you need to have in-depth knowledge of the subject. A other part is that your writing should be clear and concise. It should be clear and concise. It should be a structured and coherent answers. And you also you should use many relevant examples in your history writing. Suppose if the question is asked, how Quran help us to understand ancient Indian history? So you will have to give the many examples how different Puran that is 18 in numbers talks about this different aspects of ancient Indian history. Okay. Then the other point is that you should be have the understanding of historical sources and also the relevance to the question. You should not write many things. Suppose the question is about how Ashoka edits play an important role in knowing about the economic status of modern empire. So we will have to be strict because there is a word limit and there is a time limit also. So we should also stick to the questions only. And apart from this is that the aspirant's expectation is that the students should get good marks and also they should be selected for the interview. And in this process, in the whole journey, history plays a very important role. Apart from this, if we see 
दीज आर द स्टेजेस वेयर वी शुड स्टार्ट रीडिंग एंड स्टार्टिंग अबाउट हिस्ट्री फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मेन वी थिंक मेन वी स्टार्ट प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर यूपीएससी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी शुड कलेक्ट स्टडी मेटेरियल एंड वास्ट समर ऑफ स्टडी मेटेरियल इज अवेलेबल इन द मार्केट बोथ इन द सॉफ्ट कॉपीज एंड हार्ड कॉपीज सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी शुड गो इन टू दैट वी शुड कलेक्ट आवर स्टडी मेटेरियल वी शुड बाई इट वी शुड डाउनलोड इट सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप द सेकेंड सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप सेकेंड वी शुड अंडरस्टैंड द सिलेबस that what is the syllabus of history and we will understand in after one minute okay the understanding of syllabus is very important in history apart from this we should practice the previous year question paper so practice is very much important and previous year question paper is important then only you will we have idea that which type of questions are being asked in the examination apart from this you should read analyze and make the notes and then you should focus on the time management time management is very much important in studying about history for upsc examinations then you should develop your conceptual understanding enhance your writing skills and do a large number of revisions as can you can do all right so this is this is the way you should start your preparation for history for civil service examinations if you see this pattern you will find that how history is very much important for civil service examinations you take an example that especially in the year 2013 in the year called 2013 about 15 questions were asked in upsc examination how many 15 then you will find there was 14 question in 2014 it was 20 questions 17 questions 14 questions and then in 2018 the 21 questions were asked and these are the questions out of Hundred in the civil service examination paper one prelims. Okay, C set paper one. So out of hundred twenty one questions were asked. Sometimes it was fifteen, twenty, twenty one. So on the average basis, if you see that out of hundred questions, the average example you can take is around this. That on an average basis, seventeen to eighteen questions are asked from this paper only. From this history, that is why history is very much important for. Calling fine prelims examinations. Okay, if you go to the mains paper one, especially in GS paper one, at least five questions are asked from history. Five to six questions are asked from history out of twenty questions in GS general studies paper one. So almost you can say the one fourth of the total syllabus of GS paper one is from history. That is why history is very much important for us. If we go further, you will find. That these are the books for history syllabus. We should start reading these three books, which are the old NCERT. Okay, these three books are very much important for understanding history. Why these books are important? Because this book is ancient India. It is ancient India. Then it is written on medieval India. Then you find it is a book of modern India, and these books are written by R. S. Sharma, Satish Chandra, and B. P. Chandra. Apart from reading this, we there are some other reading materials like Ancient India and Medieval India by Poonam Dalal Daya. We have Modern India by Sonali Bansal. We have a spectrum, and then this is the vast book of the history of India by Upendra Singh. Then then we have the NCERT, and the, for the world history we have Normal Law. These are the important things, and these are the previous year questions paper published by especially Murunal. It is published by Tisha Publication, and then we have previous the mains. Solve questions we have. So these are the important book we should refer whenever we should start reading history. Apart from this, these are the other books which are important to understand history in depth. This book is written by Ail Basam, and the book name is The Wonder That Was India. For modern history, the historians refer Plassey to Partition. Plassey. to partition by sekhar bandhupadhyay we have the other book written by bipin chandra india struggle for independence and for independent india the post independent india we have two book one book is india since independence and other is india after gandhi so student basically refer this book and apart from we have art and culture by nitin singhania but we here at plutus is we have dedicated revised 
and updated notes of all topics of Indian history and world history. This is the notes which is basically prepared by Plutus IS Academy and in the class we provide this note which is combined of NCRT and the important books which are mentioned in this slide and previous slides. So these are the books are taken to prepare notes for UPSC examinations and especially these notes, these handouts are given to the students in the printed copy here and the students read it before the class. In class we understand each and particular theme, idea and the events of Indian history and we discuss it together. It's basically the student and teacher both together, they understand the topic and it the teachers here in Plutus IS makes easy for the student to understand that each topic of Indian and world history. All right. So this is the way we have completed that. These are the syllabus and here from this manner we have to start doing these things. If you go further what you find then especially the syllabus. So we know that there are three examinations in UPSC especially if you talk about there are three type of questions are coming in UPSC examinations. First type of question if you see will be in the prelims. Prelims it will be the first type. The second type will be questions will be in your GS paper one. GS paper one and then what you find the third, third type of examination of ST is in optional paper. optional paper. So there are the different syllabus of these papers. There are different syllabus. This optional paper is only for the student who have taken history as an optional subject. So first of all let us discuss the syllabus of prelims and GS paper one and then we will go further. In the first paper one especially in the first prelims examination that is CSC set paper one. In this there are many syllabus there are many topics are covered and one such line written about the Indian history and the syllabus is history of India and Indian national movement. So basically half of the attention is given on the whole history of India, the whole history of India from ancient time to medieval times, ancient time to modern times basically we can say and especially this the half attention is only given to the national movement that especially starts from 1857 to 1947. So basically in, in around half and more than half of the questions in UPSC prelims examinations are asked from Indian National Movement. Suppose that if there are 20 questions asked from Indian history, then at least 10, around 10 to 12 questions may be related to Indian National Movement and around the subjects of 19th, 18th and 20th century. All right. So this is the syllabus in prelims examinations and here there the questions are always in the objective types. If you see the paper one, if you go to the GS paper one, the syllabus is divided into different forms. The syllabus, especially the first syllabus in GS paper one is not about the whole history. The first syllabus in the GS paper one starts especially from 18th century onwards and we will discuss in detail here about this GS paper 1. So one of the first theme of GS paper 1 topic is art and culture. So basically they will ask the top, they will ask one question around. So basically they UPSC generally ask one questions from G, from history and that is particularly art and culture. So suppose in history GS paper, suppose in GS paper 1, if they have to ask five questions from history, so one question, one or two questions may be from art and culture. And this art and culture may be from ancient India to modern times. And these are the main topics of art and culture from where the especially this thing is asked. All right. If you see this, the classical dance is one such topic. Classical dance. Apart from this, we have temple architecture and then themes of ancient Indian history, literature, music and musical instruments. So these are the major topics upon which the questions are asked from ancient to modern. 
but do you know from the ancient and medieval they do not ask any questions on economic aspects social aspects cultural aspects or they will start asking questions only after the 18th century so the first part of gs paper 1 syllabus of history is art and culture the second part of gs paper 1 syllabus of history will be the modern indian history from about me till of the 18th century until the present day okay so this is the main syllabus and if you find this what you find in the modern indian history which starts in generally by the time of 18th century so especially we will have to talk about how the foundation of indian national congress was done the important movements led by mahatma gandhi especially champaran satyagraha bhagat movements or this movements okay you will discuss uh, the indian national movement especially quit india movement so these are the details which are discussed in this series then we have to they are the social religious reform movement in india especially the personalities who were attached to the indian national movement and the contribution of important personalities like the mahatma gandhi nehru patel ambedkar shyama prasad mukherjee so these are the national leaders about whom the questions may be there in upsc exams so this is the second aspect of indian history the third aspect of indian history they ask about the independent india and especially these are called the post independent india in this they will ask questions about the princely states role of important personalities then imp- then important movements after 1947 and especially about the idea of how the communism capitalism socialism is working in india so this is a part of the syllabus that is asked from post independent india so the in from history in gs paper one one part was art and culture other part is modern indian history starts from 18th century onwards and then the third part of history in the gs paper one is in post independent india all right if you go further what you find in the world history they will ask questions especially from the from the events started in 18th century so we can say they ask questions in gs paper one only in and after the time of international work that is the french revolution especially it happened in 1789 american revolution 1776 to 83 we have russian revolution 19 17 so these are the events they will ask and this industrial revolution started in 1750s to 1800 So these are the important events. They will ask questions. They will ask questions from what is decolonization, how colonization happened. They will ask about the political philosophies like communism, capitalism, socialism, and these things. And then especially, these are the events which till the foundation of United United Nations organizations. So this is the syllabus for syllabus of history for GS paper one. If you go further in detail, what you find the syllabus for history optional. Some other day we will discuss. We will have. I will make one special video for history optional paper only. And in this, what you find in this history paper one, what do you what do you find that you will find that they ask everything. They will start. There are two papers in optional. There are two papers in optional history. The one paper starts from ancient time. so one paper will start from ancient time and this will go up to medieval india so paper 1 will cover ancient india and medieval india especially and the paper 2 will start from modern india and world history so this is the main syllabus of history of okay so let us see some of the questions which are asked in previous examinations in paper 1 especially if you go to paper 1 what you find that in paper 1 especially in 2018 the prelims examination the questions there were about 1 2 3 4 5 questions from history only in paper 1 these five questions were safeguarding the indian art heritage is the need of the moment discuss it and it was in 2000 150 words it means this question was from art and culture so there was one question from art and culture other question if you discuss assess the importance of the accounts of chinese and arab tailor travelers in the construction of history of india this is from literary parts literary parts if you go further what you find throw light on the significance of the thoughts of mahatma gandhi in the present 
तो दिस क्वेश्चन दांति इज फ्रॉम द मॉडर्न द भक्ति मोमेंट रिसीव रिमार्केबल रीओरियंटेशन स्पेशली विद द एडवेंट ऑफ श्री चैतन्य प्रभु डिस्ट्रेस सो दिस इज अ पार्ट ऑफ रिलीजियस आर्ट एंड कल्चर सो दिस विल यू पार्ट ऑफ ओनली आर्ट एंड एंड द लास्ट क्वेश्चन ट्रम रिलीजन अराइजेस इधर ड्यू टू पावर स्ट्रगल और रिलेटिव डिप्राइवेशन सो दिस क्वेश्चन स्पेशली विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द मॉडर्न मॉडर्न प्लस पोस्ट इंडिपेंडेंट सो दीज आर द क्वेश्चन लेट एस सी द अदर इयर्स ऑल्सो इफ यू सी दिस लास्ट इयर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू इन जी एस पेपर वन दे आर से वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स क्वेश्चन एंड द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन वॉज हाउ विल यू एक्सप्लेन दैट मिडिवल इंडियन टेम्पल स्कल्चर्स रिप्रेजेंट द सोशल लाइफ ऑफ दोस्ट टाइम एंड दिस क्वेश्चन इज अ पार्ट ऑफ आर्ट एंड कल्चर आर्ट एंड कल्चर इफ यू सी दिलेन क्वेश्चन Why did the armies of the British East India Company, mostly comprised of the Indian soldiers, however, they won it? So the point is that this question will be a part of 18th century to 19th century, and this will be made of modern India. So the question is from modern India. Why was there a sudden spurt in famines in the colonial India since the mid 18th century? Give the reasons. and this question is also from the same part that is modern india part so this is a very important thing for us if you see other the political and administrative reorganization of the states and territories has been a continuous ongoing process since the mid 19th century so this will be also part of modern india so modern india is very important key aspect for gs paper 1 and if you see this this is the main contribution of the gupta period and chola period in the indian heritage and culture and this will be a part of art and culture art and culture so this art and culture so there are two questions are asked in 2022 mains exam from art and culture part and the third one discuss the significance of a lion and bull figurines in the in the mythology and in art and culture so this question is also a part of art and culture so what do you see that out of this six question of 20 so in 20 out of 20 questions six questions are, are asked from history and out of this six three is related to art and culture so art and culture and modern india is very important this time there is no question from the world history but sometimes they ask questions from world history like how french and american american revolutions made a modern world the questions may be from russian revolutions questions may be related to industrial revolutions or united nations organizations so sometimes they ask question in the world history sometimes they do not but art and culture and modern india is a very important part for world history all right let us see the one question from prelims which is asked this time if you see this question what do you find with reference to ancient indian history especially consider the following statement The concept of astupa is a Buddhist origin. Concept of astupa is a Buddhist in origin. This is a first statement. No, this was not Buddhist because astupa exists in the pre-Buddhist time also. It was existing in the pre-Buddhist time also. This so this will not be a part of. And so this will be a first statement. Astupa was generally a depository of relics. Yes, it is. Then we have astupa was a. What is even commemorative structure in the Buddhist tradition up to the 18th? So if we go here, we will find that only two is a correct answer. Especially, so only two will be our answer in this question. If if these are the things, so this is the way we find that history and especially the part of art and culture. and modern india play a very important role in both prelims examination and gs paper 1 but there are some questions from ancient and medieval india also and do you know one mark play a very important role in the selection for the mains so we should not skip anything the history is always important and this is the way we should be doing preparations here at plutus we start 
with ancient history, medieval history, then we go into the modern and then independent India, world history, and also we do separately agriculture. We take about one and a half months, especially we take about 35 to 40 lectures to complete each component of history. Suppose we take about 30 days. 30 days means it is a class of about, let's say, 1.5 1, 1. hours, 5 hours, 2 hours. So we take about 30 to 35 hours to complete ancient history. Then we take about 50 to 60 hours to complete modern history. We complete his, history, history of medieval India in about 30, 30 classes. Then we take time for world history, independent history and art and culture. So this is the way and through a stages we complete everything and we start preparing from the GS paper one mains and then we try to solve. We have a weekly classes also and apart from our regular classes, the foundation course, the Plutus IS also takes regular test, test for students. Suppose if we have covered two topics of ancient India, let's say Buddhism and Jainism and modern empire. So the students give class test on Saturday so that the they can reread their writings after class. They can eva evaluate themselves, they can attempt questions and they can be suggested by the concerned faculty here that what is the mistake in the solving questions and all. So this is the way the Plutus IS starts preparing your history syllabus and in this journey Plutus IS supports a lot. So in another video we will take up the other topic and we will be discussing in that period. Alright, thank you so much.